In this video of the series, we're going to be looking at how Pascal's triangle can be used with probability. In order to do this, you can see the triangle to the right already worked out for us down to eight rows. We're going to have to keep the following things in mind. First, the exponents in the binomial expansion represents the situation. Now, what that means is if we're going to be expanding a binomial, there's really two variables you're going to have, hence the prefix by. And the exponents for each one represents the number of occurrences of that particular event. So if I have x to the fourth y squared, that means that event x occurs four times, event y occurs twice. So that's what this first part means. Second thing we need to keep in mind is the coefficient, which is represented by Pascal's triangle. So all of these numbers represent the coefficients of the terms. That represents the number of outcomes of that specific event occurring. And to find the total number of outcomes, what you do is you add up the coefficients of the entire row. Now what's nice about that is if I decide to add up the coefficients of each row, you know, 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4, 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, I'm going to go ahead and say that's 8. And then 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is 11, plus 4 is 15, plus 1 is 16. And if I take a look, you can see a pattern going on in that situation. Now, the pattern here for the situation is 1, then you multiply by 2, by 4, by 8, and then you have 16. And so the ratio between these is 2. So what happens is this is 2 to the 0 power. This is 2 to the 1st power. 2 squared. This is 2 cubed. This is 2 to the 4th. This is 2 to the 5th. And this would be 2 to the 6th. I can see 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 5 and 5 makes it 30, plus 1 and 1 makes it 32, and 2 to the 5th is 32. So you can add the coefficients of the row for it, or you can take 2 to the power of that row for it. So if I want two events, I have the 2 squared, I got 4 total there. So that's kind of what we have to keep in mind. I'm going to do the sum, but I think it's nice to kind of see there are more patterns inside of Pascal's triangle than what we learned just in Algebra 2 alone. So get familiar with the main setup before you move on to the next videos.